What are you doing? Yeah? We don't know about green yet. Get some more off alpha. What are you doing? You learning about your rope? Yeah? It's a good boy. So here's Aladar the next day. Uh, we did get home at midnight, uh, one o'clock ish by the time we got all finished. And uh, you can see I still have his rope on. He kept his rope on overnight. And I do like to do that with my Mustangs in the beginning. It, it teaches them kind of on their own to think through um, some pressure and release. And then um, all of my Mustangs are super good about the rope and not worried if they step on their lead rope by accident or if the rope kind of gets down around their legs. So uh, I really like to have it on kind of in the beginning and it can help me. So you see here, I'm coming in on a 45 degree angle. My kind of body is rounded. Head is kind of angled down. Fingers are closed. And just building upon um, the little session that I had with him yesterday, where I spent like 10-15 mm, minutes with him, uh, and seeing what he'll let me do. And he's got a pretty ri uh, nice mindset. Uh, his his uh, response to things is to think about it versus to react at first. So that is a trait that I really liked about him. And you see I'm doing a lot of uh, approach and retreat, making sure I can give him enough space. And then kind of building upon again. So. For me, uh, horses have zones, so they have their head, their neck, then their shoulder, and then your barrel, the butt, the tail, and then their legs. So uh, every horse is different in where they're comfortable. Sometimes uh, some horses prefer if I touch their face first, while others will let me go to the neck and shoulder. So uh, he's pretty funny here, as he's feeling pretty comfortable enough to at least give his little eye a, a nice scratch and he's not too worried about my presence. Got a nice lick and chew. So now I'm going to see if I can come in on the left side. And she's not so sure about me being over on that side. I'm going to see if I can get him to draw to me just a little bit. That was really good. And I probably should have uh, uh, retreated after that for a second because then, because I didn't, I got him to, he walked away from me there. So I kind of missed an opportunity which happens. So I'm going to go again on the left side and again you see he's a little bit more protective of that side and uh, again with these guys uh, they have one side versus the other kind of like people are left-handed versus right. He prefers to see me in the right eye versus the left. Oftentimes they prefer the left because when they're in the shoots and they're getting worked on it's all on the left side but it is fairly common that they can have different sides that they're used to. Um, oftentimes people worry it's their eyesight. It's, it's really not once you work with these guys, it's just <laughs> one side of the brain versus the other. And they get pretty conditioned to uh, being comfortable on one side versus the other sometimes. So now I am working on a little bit of getting them to walk off on the pressure of the halter and he has a little bit of this understanding already that he has uh, done for himself and he's a pretty smart little dude so he uh, has figuring it out really well and I'm just I'm not really pulling I'm just putting equal pressure on him and then I give it right back 
And so actually there are some horses that are running around. And so that got him a little bit more uh, responsive. You can see he just got a little reactive to my hand going up a little quick, but and again, we're just going to work on redirecting our feet some. Got a little lick and chew. And it's very important kind of in the beginning of this uh, relationship and working on pressure and release with the halter that I set him up for success this way. Making it really positive. And anytime uh, they get a little stuck, you might see me kind of move them to the left or to the right. And then just taking some time there to touch his face. Again, he got a little reactive on the left side. But he's really good about touch, which is nice. And then him also coming in and giving me a sniff. And so he's pretty good now at letting me touch his neck, shoulder. And he's pretty happy about the eyes. I tend to use this as a um, positive reinforcement in between the eyes. There's a lot of facial nerves there and they tend to like that when you rub. Uh, and then that can be, especially when they're not too food motivated in the beginning, um, that works really well for me along with voice. But working on touching, I was able to touch his back part of his bum, work down the back part of the leg, and I was able to touch his uh, right leg, which was nice. And then just getting him to move a little bit after that. And yes, I'm in shorts. It is Florida, so it's pretty warm. And my legs are white because I typically wear riding pants. But didn't need it on this day. And working off, taking off his tag. He's pretty relaxed now with me using two hands. So it's always nice when you can get the tag off. And just every now and then he gets a little worried. Now I'm going to work on uh, seeing if I can find an itchy spot. That can be really, really big with these guys. If, when, if you can find an itchy spot and they really helps the bonding process. And I'm just chatting with my uh, working student a little bit. He's letting me touch his whole belly. Again, I'm going based off of feel. So I feel a really good energy with him. His body feels really nice and soft. Give him some scratches and then give him a minute. He actually comes in for some more. And again, working on giving him some good scratches. Even got some lip movement, which is really good. Means he's kind of allowing me in. And he's a little bit on the internal side. Like he's a good boy and uh, he's not super reactive. But um, also have to be mindful that he doesn't kind of close up too much on me. Because he is, he is the type that will stand versus uh, to run away, which I kind of prefer, honestly. And again, just working on that approach and retreat with the scratches. Got a little bit of lick and chew. And he came towards for a little bit more of a little sniff. It's a nice little moment. I 
as I'm trusting him as well with letting him in my space. kind of goes both ways. I have to be willing to trust him and uh, he has to be willing to trust me. So again, we're having a nice little moment there. And he's doing really good now on the follow with the lead rope. And I'm going to Try to work my way down on his leg. It's just giving me a little uh, check here. And it's not, it feels pretty innocent. It doesn't feel, um, sometimes if they do that, but their muscles are super tight, uh, I would have to push him out of the way, but uh, he really didn't. And he let me pick up that foot, which is really good. Now I'm going to let him sit there and think about it for a second. Got a nice lick and chew. Give him a good rub on his face. Work around the eyes. Uh, keep the bugs off. So working on being friends. And really nice how he comes off of that pressure. Now I'm going to work to see if I can uh, touch the left, which again is the side he's not the most comfortable about. So you can see kind of the difference versus the right side versus the left. And then I'm just going to go back. So I start up high at the neck and you see he's trying to tell me he was a little bit uncomfortable. And then got a little bit of a walk away, which that's okay. So he gave a little nip there, but then I went back and I was able to touch. So I felt that was kind of a good spot to kind of stop with that because he was being pretty good. And it's important to when they do give a little night or bite or a nibble to not really pull back too much to then go right back because he's just trying to communicate but you have to be kind of careful that line that you draw there of uh, when they're trying to use themselves and communicate so now I'm, I'm uh, working on bouncing on him a little bit because I wanted to see he's being so good uh, and his body felt really good. Kind of part of the training that I like to use is getting on them because that helps build the relationship and really takes away the uh, um, thought of me being threatening as a predator like. So if I'm able to get on them that kind of and they're okay and they see that I'm not going for the jugular, uh, they really can respond well. So working on, he, he is a little shorter, which is nice. So I'm able to get my arm, start preparing him by letting that other eyeball see it. You can tell he's kind of like, what are you doing to me? What's happening? And then give him some rubs after. So just building upon these little steps of starting to bounce next to the horse. Um, sometimes... For some of them, you can't get too close. You have to start further away, and then you build up coming closer, and then they start to bounce a little bigger. And then I'm going to have him take a couple of steps to me because he wants to spin the other way, and I want him to think of when I step off, he's going to come to me instead of having that booty facing at me.
then I am able to go up a little bit further. <laughs> Sat on it a little bit longer. And again, have them take a couple of steps to me. And go back to rubbing the body. That time I was able to get a knee up. And I actually don't mind when they walk forward. I think it's really good when they learn kind of in this stage to move forward when you kind of hop on halfway or partway. Um, it helps them stay a little bit more re relaxed versus when they stay still and then you ask for that movement and then they are not sure what to do. But I like it when they move forward uh, in these beginning stages. And again, this session only lasted about 20 minutes and um, I was able to then get on, swing a leg over and I was really, really pleased with him and he's such a cool horse that uh, then we had to pack up our things and head to Maryland for a uh, three star with my other horses, but he was a super good boy.